Step 5. Partial derivatives. Before we uh, go into the derivation of the partial um, uh, differential equation that describes the propagation of waves, we are going to spend a little bit of time reviewing some basics of partial derivatives. So let's begin with a function y that's a variable of a single, that's a function of a, a single variable. So we've got y is equal to f of x. If we want to know what the change of y is as we vary x, that's given by the uh, derivative, the ordinary derivative dy by dx, right here. And the way we read it, I'm sure you all know, is the rate of change of y with respect to change in x. So we can consider an example. Let's pick y is equal to x squared, and that's given by this blue line and the rule to take the ordinary derivative of this function is simply to pull the exponent of 2 down and we get dy by dx is equal to 2 times x. So what does this uh, rate of change mean? It means that if we uh, look at a specific point along the x-axis and then we uh, substitute it into this expression for dy by dx, it tells us how fast the function is changing at that point. For example, we can pick x is equal to minus 1. That's this point right here. If we substitute it into the expression for dy dx, we just get negative 2. What does this negative 2 really mean? It's how much the function is decreasing at that point. That's what the negative part means. And 2 is how fast it is changing, increasing or decreasing. And because it is negative, it's decreasing, so the rate of change can be um, pictured as, this, uh, as the gradient of this tangent line that's touching our uh, blue uh, parabola at the point of minus x, uh, sorry, minus 1. We can also pick a different x. For example, if we pick x is equal to 1, we get the following tangent line. And this time, we see that uh, the tangent line is increasing. That's because dy by dx is equal to 2. At that point, our function is increasing. The rate of change is given by 2, and because it's positive, the uh, value of the function is increasing at that point. So we went from a negative gradient to a positive gradient, so somewhere in between these two points, the gradient had to be equal to 0 in order to flip from negative to a positive. And that point is given just by x is equal to 0. At that point, the function y is not changing. It's not increasing, it's not decreasing, because the gradient of the tangent line is 0, signified by dy by dx equal to 0. Now what happens if we have a function, but this time it's a function of two variables? So we can write it as z is equal to a function of x and y. And we will see examples of this constantly in our module, and those functions will not only depend on two variables, but on uh, three variables, four variables, and so on. So now, when we want to look at the rate of change of the function, there are two coordinates that we can vary. We can vary x and we can vary y. So what the partial derivatives tell us is how much is the function changing with respect to change in one of these coordinates while keeping the other coordinates uh, constant. For example, if we write the following, dz by dx while keeping y constant. That's the notation. So this curly d differentiates uh, the partial derivative from a normal ordinary d, which stands for ordinary derivative, which we saw before. So here we've got the change, the rate of change of the function z with respect to x while keeping y constant. Similarly, we can ask, what's the rate of change of z with respect to y while keeping x constant? and we write it in the following way. But often we drop these little subscripts which tell us which variable are we keeping constant and simply write the following. So if we just write dz by dx, we are implying that we are keeping the other variable either one or all of the other variables constant. So in this case, we are keeping y constant. If we write dz by dy, it implies that we are keeping x constant. So with that in mind, let's apply these rules to uh, an example. Let's pick a fairly complicated function. z is equal to x cubed times y minus e to the power of x times y. So we can ask, how does this function uh, vary with respect to x? 
if we keep y constant. So we write the following partial derivative, dz by dx is equal to 3x squared times y minus y times e to the power, uh, power of x times y. We obtain this again by treating y constant. And we only differentiate it with respect to x. We can ask the other question, how does our function change with respect to y while keeping x constant? So that's given by dz by dy, and that's the following expression. Now we can go further and take derivatives of higher orders, which means we take our rates of change with x or y and differentiate those again, either with respect to x or with respect to y. So the second order partial derivative of z with respect to x is given by the following. It's the partial um, derivative with respect to x of dz by dx, while keeping y constant. And you can check for yourself that it gives you the following expression. But we don't have to uh, differentiate with uh, respect to the same variable over and over again. What we can do is we can ask, what's the second uh, order partial derivative of z when we first vary y and then we vary x? So we first we compute dz by dy while keeping x constant, we have done that above, and then we differentiate with respect to x but keeping y constant. And that gives us the following expression. So just to reiterate, these uh, um, partial derivatives are of, are of the first order because we have differentiated them, we have, we have differentiated the function only once. If we differentiate the function twice, then we say that that's the uh, second order partial derivative. So this covers the very basic uh, notions of partial derivatives, and now we will apply them to derive the wave equation.